Welcome into InsideCarolina.com podcast on the beat live. It's Tuesday night, a little after nine o'clock. We're rolling with Johnny T shirt and Johnny T shirt.com. With on the beat live comes the band. The band is now consistent of four guys. Uh, we got to update our little start stream, uh, stream starting soon. We've got Adam Smith, who has finally got his feet wet as Inside Carolina's beat writer, and of course, Ross Martin, besties. It's like Festy Besties. Does anybody watch Big Brother? It's Festy's Besties stuff. Guys, let's get right into it. Ross, you want to have a, a lively show. Let's do it. So I'm coming to you first, Adam. I kind of enjoyed watching Mac Brown correct Ross a little bit in, <laughs> in, in, the, in the press availability today. Ross asked about how they were going to manage playing two guys at once. Um, does one guy mess up and you jerk him out or whatever? Mac said it would be a little bit more complex than that. One thing about Mac Brown and two quarterbacks, he's got some experience doing it for sure. How nice does Ross's hair look tonight, by the way? I mean, it's it's epic for those of us who are follically challenged. Um, I do not pay attention to hair, and I haven't after uh, this happened. You, you should. should. He looks great over there. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, Mac did – I guess, what would you say, Ross? He corrected you? Um, well, I think <clears> – <throat> I would say I asked a great question that really got some good information out of him because he had to explain what he meant because what he said – I was, it was a little confusing. I was like, well, are you going to play two quarterbacks? How is that going to shake the confidence? And so I was kind of trying to get him to say more about that. But, Adam, you write the quarterback article. What do you think about that? I Well, I thought the question you asked is is what came to my mind. I think we even exchanged a, a look uh, across the way to each other. Um, but, yeah, Mac did say, Tommy Mack did say, I think, uh, make sure you hear me correctly. Because <laughs> it seemed it seemed what he said the first time through was suggesting that both guys would play. But both Drake May and Jacoby Criswell would be playing. I don't – I was wondering as he was talking, is he saying that, you know, this is, is this going to be a two-quarterback system? Um, so, I was glad Ross followed up and asked the, the question. I think Ross said something like, could that be a weird scenario? And I think Mac sort of grab, grabbed onto that word weird because he said, no, uh, no, Ross, I think it's a smart scenario. Um, so, but, uh, but, but he, he, Ross was, I, I felt like exactly right in asking the question. And he, we got more insight onto that. And he said, um, Mac went on to say, uh, essentially, we're not going to have a short leash, or, you know, this is what he said on whoever is the starter. You know, we're not going to pull the guy. I believe he said we're not going to pull the guy after he has a three and out. Um, so, but he seemed to today at least to give every indication um, that we'll probably see that we'll probably see two guys, um, both guys against Florida. Yeah. I don't and, know if that's how you took it, Ross. Yeah, obviously this is a, a very interesting conversation. Um, my point was that you know, how, yeah, how long is this leash going to be? Like, I mean, if if Drake May starts or Criswell starts and, and throws a a um interception on, on the second you know maybe the second possession are you gonna take him out then like I, I was a little confused as to why he would say that um and he made a good point that saying look look we got a lot of good players a lot of positions and if one player is not playing well we take them out and that's gonna be the same thing for quarterback i think it's a little bit different at the quarterback position given the nature of the position um so that's kind of why i probed that because it did it does sound like they're gonna play two if one struggles in an extreme way but, you know, that's the whole thing. Like, if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks is the old saying. So, I, I wonder – my conf, the confidence question was my point. Like, you got to give the guy – you got to invest in him and give him confidence to be that he is the man. This is his team. Um, so, that was my point. I don't, I don't know. What do you think, Tom? What do you think about that, that confidence thing about, like, having a short leash or a long leash with, with two QBs in the first couple games, given, given the, two, the, 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 three, the, the two or three first games? Uh, you know, I think if you pull them out, to your point, and credit your point that you were trying to make, you can't – quarterbacks can't play with that guy standing back there. Uh, mm -hmm. They just can't do it, and especially young guys. I mean, you'll kill them right out of the gate. And, you know, if they were both juniors and seniors and they had done it before and had success before and had some failures, then, yeah, you can have a short leash. But I, I think, you know, I think they're going to play them both. I, I think there needs to be a plan going into it how they're going to do it. Now, this hot hand stuff is all, and I get that. You know, you've got, say, Drake May starts, and he comes out and he, he leads them to two touchdowns on the first two drives he, he has the ball. 
what do you do then? Do you pull him and let Chris Bell get it or vice versa? I don't know. But I think if you don't have a plan and you just wing it, then I think you, you risk messing with some confidence. And I think where the confidence is going to be is on whoever he names starter, right? You name me as a starter, and then I play what I believe to be decent in my first real action, but then you play this other guy and you bring this other guy in, then what am I thinking? And I think that's a legitimate deal, right, Adam? I mean, that's a a legitimate issue they're going to have to deal with at the most important position on the field. I know Max said in, in, you know, in opposition to the, if you have two, you have none. A lot of people don't have any. Well, we have two. Yeah. Uh, And he made that point, but you better manage them right or you won't have any um, because you'll have a guy in his feelings and that is never good. What do you think, Adam? I took it, Mac, of course, is you never know what he might do. He took it back to the early 90s today with a reference to Jason Stanisek and Mike Thomas, um, (laughs) which which some of us got, um, you know, of a certain age. Um, but to, to our man, I, I know uh, what, what Albert is saying over here in the, in the comments. I agree with what Albert's saying, that, that it sort of was a, a public commentary to the guy who might be chosen as the backup. Yeah, there we go. Uh, more of a public <laughs> message because Mac did say, you know, and we want whoever isn't named the starter to be ready. You know, yeah. he, he, he uh, verbalized that today. <clears throat> he, be ready on that. Um, so, so let me ask this. Let's say this is just an example. Let's say Drake May goes out and, and you know has maybe you know struggles struggles against uh, or plays well okay or against Georgia State. And then App State really, really struggles, throws two interceptions, fumbles the ball in the first half, and and then Jacoby Criswell comes in, in the second half and wins the game and plays awesome. Do you roll with Criswell then? And then what happens to Drake May at that point? You know, you've, you a guy struggles, and then a guy comes in and and takes over the team. Awesome performance, wins the game. They carry him off on the shoulders, and you got this five star Drake May sitting there. You know what happens in that scenario? That's kind of what I fear when you start doing this thing with two QBs. And I think we saw it a little bit with this Trubisky Marquise Williams thing, where there was a little bit issue there that caused some drama back then. So I, that's it's just kind of what I think about when you you mess with kids' confidence with someone looking over their shoulder, like Tommy said. Yeah, I but, think when no, you. It's- like we were talking about today, there's what well, it's 11 days until they play a game. Mac can say that today because it's not even game week. And we're not even, we haven't even turned the corner into the week of the first game. Mac can say that today. And that's what he, he gives us today. And let's say on August the 27th, you know, Drake Mays the starter and he plays well. You wouldn't think he would struggle against Florida A&M necessarily. Um mm-hmm. Let's say he plays well, you know, he can come up after the game and say, well, you know, Drake really acquitted himself well today. You know, like, you know, it's all the, the information is all relative until something happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, like I, I think that's fine for Max to say today. I think all the scenarios you're talking about are certainly something to wonder about. But yeah. I mean, it's sort of across that bridge when we get there. You know, you can't have uh, Jacoby Criswell getting his getting carried off on people's shoulders in Boone until you play. <laughs> AMU and beat them, uh, uh, you know, assuming the Tar Heels beat them and then go up to go up to Kid Brewer Stadium. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think it was fine for Mac to say that today. I mean, he's given us little morsels by morsels each little bit. <laughs> and I, I wonder, I wonder if it's this idea of keeping the quarterbacks here, keeping the quarterbacks yeah. interested, engaged. Keep they need two on the roster. Two, they need both those guys on the roster throughout the whole season, and that might be kind of the what he's saying and the motivation there. I think 100% Mac knows how to, to do what you just mentioned, Ross. And I think a lot of that today is the deal. I think the Florida A&M game, you just play them. I, I would almost do, um, you know, half by half mm. like they did against, was it Wofford last year? I would almost do that. Now, where, where the rubber hits the road is up there in Boone on Labor Day or Labor Day weekend. Yeah. That is where you have to start seeing somebody separate and all that. Now, Ross, to your point, if I was it Delaware game that Marquise struggled, yeah. and then Marquise, Trubisky came and went off. Yeah, right? Marquise, like I, I'm probably gonna get this wrong. Maybe someone will correct me, but like he went off the playbook and was like kind of freewheeling too much. I think was what came out of that. Like he wasn't calling the plays that were being called into him, and so Fedora 
just pulled him and then Trubisky played really well. And of course, going into that year, I think this was 15, this is 15 going into this year. It was very tight between Trubisky and Marquise Williams. And it was always this idea that Trubisky was essentially the better quarterback. Um, and then uh, it was kind of made a big deal, but then Marquise got the job back, I think the next game, but um, you kind of saw how good Trubisky would be in the air and through the ground. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't think you pull like, okay, and we can move on or whatever, but I don't think you pull a guy permanently. If you start Drake and he goes out against Appalachian State, and if my memory serves, Sam Howell got pulled briefly against Appalachian State three years ago, and then was it Reuter got hurt immediately. Um, but you, if he struggles against App State and Chriswell comes in, you don't start Chris Well the next game. Then you lose Drake May if you do that. I think you go back and you start Drake again or whoever your starter is, and you start them there. Um, and then if it becomes a pattern, then you make a move. You can't – he knows how to play the game. He did it at Texas. He did it at um, Carolina. You mentioned Jason Stanisek. Stanisek was in my sociology class. Um, dude was pretty smart, um, but it was a summer school sociology class, so it was a crip class. Uh, but <laughs> – you know, it was an interesting dynamic then. I think it can work now. Um, the portal changes everything. We'll see. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I want to bring in our first uh, listener question because it's directly related to this. The other news that we've gotten in the last week is around injuries. British Brooks is gone for the season. Mac confirmed it today. So, Ross, Adam, how does British Brooks's injury impact the QB battle, and also just the running back room. I mean, Ross, you want to take this one? Go ahead, Adam. It's Well, first of all, I mean, you just feel terrible for British Brooks. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, uh, he, he, he had come back. You know, he didn't have to come back. He had graduated, I believe. Um, he had decided to stay around after finishing the season as strong as he did last year. I think it was 285 yards in the final three games. He had 124 yards at NC State, and he had that – what, 63-yard touchdown against South Carolina in the bowl game. Um, you know, you just feel terrible for him. Uh, you know, a great guy, great teammate, captain, uh, special teams ace. But, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it impacts the quarterback battle. I think Antoine Green's injury impacts the quarterback battle. Um, you know, you could be try to be funny with it and say uh, British probably knows pass protection better than any of those guys. It could really it could affect him in terms of getting hit. You know, like you could make a joke about it that way. But um, I mean, you're looking at when you're looking at the playmakers that UNC has. Obviously, everything starts with Josh Downs right now. But aside from Josh Downs and you know Kamari Kamari Morales, maybe at tight end. Um, there's a lot of unproven guys, a lot of talented playmakers, a lot of guys that uh, were heavily recruited, a lot of guys that um, are promising for the future that look like stars one day, but you know they have yet to prove to prove it on a college football Saturday. Um, so with British Brooks, you know we were getting in it today with Mac. Obviously, you got what Elijah Green, Elijah Green, DJ Jones, Marion Hampton. Um, George Petaway, Mac said today we had heard this, and Mac clarified today that Caleb Hood, the, the running back, has been hurt for a substantial period of, in camp. He, he's been hurt with, I believe, it's a lower body injury. Um, you know, so I, I guess it's really four guys at running back right now. Those four guys I named, and um, you know, you just hate it for British folks. What, what are your thoughts on how that his absence might impact the quarterback situation, Ross? Lee Tommy wanted to go something. Yeah, I'll let me jump in. I, British Brooks, it, it, okay, the quarterback situation, you got a guy behind you that knows the plays and knows everything. Jason Staples always says running back's first job is to not get his quarterback killed, and that's what happens with young guys a lot. So that is where that will affect that. It's a sure known quantity back there. But I think in the running back room they'll be fine. A lot of people on the chat and on the message boards and all talk about Hampton and Petaway and all that. Uh, the running back room will figure itself out. We're already seeing that. They hadn't played a game yet, and they're down to four healthy guys if Caleb Hood is not as healthy as he needs to be. British Brooks's loss is giant on special teams. 
And I think that's where it makes more difference, Ross, than anything. Running back room, yeah. Leadership, yeah. He's still going to be out there. He's going to be coaching. But on special teams that Carolina hasn't been great at, um, to lose a guy like that. I mean, yeah, they yeah. lost Matt Collins, and then special teams was a big deal back then. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think the, the two points both of y'all made, I think it, it it hurts pass protection, which is, is vital to that, that position. And that can be the difference in a, in a game with, with sacks and – and uh, turnovers and whatnot. And then, yes, he plays on all four special teams, and he was. I'm not sure if he's – I would assume he still is the special teams captain. I'm not sure if that changed with his with his role as a um, as a starting running back. But, yeah, I mean, you lose a veteran presence. You lose that leadership. He's still going to be in the room. He's still going to be coaching. He's going to start coaching the running backs as, like, a student coach. But I think it's a huge loss. And I think combining the Green loss and the British Brooks loss, when you get start getting more of those when it adds up, I think you can kind of – you know, it's okay if you have just one, but I think when you start stacking them with two with two senior leaders, that's when they add up and you're like, all right, well, dang, that's you know, that's two of our what top four kind of um offensive players. That's why it becomes an issue. But in terms of running backs, we can move on from this. But I mean, I expect I think Amaron Hampton, he's the he's the next big back, right? If Caleb Hood can't go, even though he's a, a June enrollee, maybe goal line stuff, short yard stuff, it might be Amaron Hampton. Um, because Petaway, Elijah Green. And DJ Jones are kind of the scat back speed guys, more than Michael Carter mold. So, I mean, I think in Florida against Florida and M, we'll see all four. I'm not sure of Hood's complete availability. I think he's back now, but um, there's a chance you see uh, all four. But they're going to have to figure out the, the two or three guys and roll with them, and that's probably going to be. I think one of them has to be a freshman. I think it makes sense for them to be the freshman, and I think as as kind of as a fan that one of them is a is a freshman. I think Petaway. And Hampton are are going to be studs this year, if not later on in their careers. And let me jump. Let me jump in real quick. I, I, Mac did say today that I think Caleb Hood practiced today, but that he had missed missed a lot of time. But to what to what Ross was getting into there with the two freshmen, with Amarion Hampton and George Petaway. You know, I was listening to Mac the last time we got him um, last week when we were he was talking about the freshman, and he stopped just short. He was about to make the. Michael Car- Carter, Javante Williams comparison. He was talking about yeah. their speed and their power, and he's talking about them being a one punch. And he said, "Just like," and he was about to say, "You know, those those two names were right on the on his lips," but he pulled back um, for whatever reason. Well, to Tyler Woods is talking about RPOs in the uh, in the chat and how much pass pro is important. Go back and watch Javante and Michael Carter save Sam Howell's butt a lot in those first two years. I mean, you cannot speak to how important those guys were. And then we see what happened last year when they weren't there. That's not to say Ty Chandler wasn't getting it done or Green or Jones or whatever. But for the most part, Howell was clean but for holding the ball the first two years. And then last year, he held the ball and he had guys in his face right out the gate. So, I mean, I think that's important. Pass pro is important in any offense – especially with a rookie quarterback. Where yeah, do we I want think, to go next, I think boys? when you have a, a first-time starter out there, it's you want as much help and support around them as you can get, wherever it's coming from. You know, whoever's yeah, and, and that could be Bridge Brooks settling down the quarterback, settling down the, the young lineman. You know, that helps when you have a guy who's been there before. Same with Antoine Green. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a great point, Adam. Speaking of offense, we have a question from Jack. There were also some injury news on the offensive line. A couple of players missing games, or excuse me, missing practices here and there. Is the concern starting to mount as well on the offensive line? Or do you think that UNC has enough guys to be ready for Florida A&M, and then by the time the season goes along, people will get healthier and healthier? Yeah, let's let's dive into this. I think there's concerns on the right side with – with Rice missing time, with Travion Green missing time, and with Spencer Rowland, as Adam and I discussed um, kind of after practice, uh, Spencer Rowland's missing one or two practices a week because he's got class. He's got NBA responsibilities down at Keenan Flagler, which I thought was kind of funny. Like, I mean, dang, like, you come to school to play football, you can't be going to class. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. But um, Too soon. look, I think they feel really good about the left side. Awesome Richards is a third-year starter. Ed, Ed Montless seems like a guy who's kind of a very good kind of sturdy year, and they love Mac raves about Corey Gaynor, and and the center is something UNC's kind of has struggled with has struggled with the last couple of years. 
So as long as, you know, one of William Barnes, Zach Rice, they've been playing Caden Baker at guard and tackle. I think they kind of get that ironed out. They have 11 days. You know, we think 11 days is short, but that's a lot of time. So I think, you know, I think they're cautiously kind of optimistic that they can get together here. They just can't have guys getting injured. That's what that's what really hurts the chemistry. And the chemistry is the most important thing on the offensive line. Adam, anything to add there? Yeah, I was good to add to what you were saying. I, I think William Barnes, Max said, has missed some time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's been banged up a little bit. I wrote down in my notepad over here, my trusty uh, notepad, or I hope it's trusty, that uh, my note to myself was it sounds like the right side of the line is a little bit of a mess right now. Um, because exactly what Ross said, it seems like they feel good about the left side with the Seam Richards, Ed Montalus, and then it's center with Corey Gaynor and Brian Anderson. Um but I think William Barnes has been banged up a little bit. Spencer Rowland, Ross, and I were having a laugh about it. Like, this just sets up. Uh, yeah. I mean, the guy grabbed away from Harvard. You know, into it. I mean, my gosh. I mean, you know, none of us here can even get in. He's graduated from Harvard. But, I mean, just think about Keenan Stadium one of these fall Saturdays when he gives up a sack, you know, to some monster in the ACC. I mean, there's going to be a handful of people there complaining about him you know, taking too many classes or being in class too much and not getting out there and protecting the the edge, you know, or something like that. But- Adam, do, do your impression you did me. You got – you're going to have fucking uh, – sorry. Ooh. You're going to have uh, Bob Smith from uh, from Mebane, you know, coming out of the stadium. Like, we got Spencer Rowland going to NBA classes, giving up sacks to Virginia Tech. What's going on, man? I'm here to watch football, not watch a guy go to class. You know, we're going to have that kind of stuff. So that, that's where uh, Adam was going with that. What did the, what did the Ohio State quarterback uh, say the one time? I came to play football. I didn't came to play come to play school or something like that. I, exactly. Twelve gauge said that I think way back in the day. Um, yeah, well, same type of guy I think that would be really fired up when Roy would put in the blue team. That same kind of fan might have uh, might have something to say about a Spencer Rowland situation. But I mean, if there's anything we know about Spencer Rowland, the guy's a quick study. You know, like I mean. He got through Harvard. He was a great player in the Ivy League. Uh, he seems like he's going to be a useful asset on the line as what is a swing tackle, right? Ross, is that sort of the yeah, – the- Yeah, and, you know, there's a, reason, there's a reason why this guy, you know, went to play at Harvard and not, you know, high-level football. So, I don't know. I think it, you heard of something – who was it? Uh, was it Miles Murphy in an interview said that he needs to work on his uh, quickness or something? I mean, one player was like kind of like, man, Spencer Rowland needs to work on his – quickness he's getting used to the speed of college so uh, i'm not sure how much we'll see him i think if we see him that means there's something else wrong uh, if we see him a lot that means something else is wrong i say go with zach rice if he's the guy that's getting the most reps at right tackle we haven't been to class we have sorry we haven't been to practice to see who's getting the most reps at those spots um but i don't know asim richard said to us on sunday after practice that you know, he made it seem like I believe he used the word solidify. We've got a lot to solidify mm-hmm. on the offensive line. But, you know, he was saying it in a good way in that he felt like his words were they have eight to nine guys that, you know, are in that mix. They just got to put the pieces to the puzzle together and, and see what happens. And, um, you know, like we've talked about, the schedule will allow you to to settle in a little bit here with the FCS school to open up um, before you go to Boone. I just remember people saying, oh, they've got so much experience, it doesn't matter. Um, if people miss practice, da 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 and here we are. It felt like listening to Mac today, um, he kept like, it was like a hospital roll call. Oh, yeah, that guy, he missed he, he missed some time too. Oh, yep, mm, he, he's been out too. Oh, Zach Rice, yeah, he's been missing. You can't have offensive linemen missing practice uh, at this point in the season. And to y'all's point, um, the Harvard grad, might be the man uh, the way they've been doing that. So anyway, what you got, John? Yeah, I want to I want to take a step back with the offense for a second because we're at the point now. UNC has now lost their top three rushers from last year: Ty Chandler, Sam Howell, and British Brooks. They have now lost four of their top five, or excuse me, four of their top six wide receivers. They have Josh Downs and Kamari Morales left. Uh, uh, Antoine Green might come back. The injuries are mounting a little bit. Is anybody starting to get a little bit worried about the offense? This is a team that's breaking in a new quarterback and their top weapons are going down. I don't know, at this point in fall camp, is that starting to get uh, concerning for either of you, Ross or Adam? It's suboptimal. You know, I mean, it's not, it is not optimal. Um, 
I don't know. I hate to oversimplify it, but and maybe Ross, maybe Ross can give me a we'll do a point <laughs> counterpoint here. Ross can disagree with me, but I, I feel like it all starts with however the quarterback plays. You know, like yeah. um, I mean, I don't know if it's that. <laughs> it's a highly technical analysis I just gave you there, but I mean, I just feel like if you know, let's say let's just say Drake Mays the starter. If he's playing well, I think everything starts to figure itself out. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. What do you, what would you say to that, Ross? Yeah, I mean, so first thing I thought about when Antoine Green got hurt was, look, great opportunity for Andre Green. First thing I thought about when British Brooks got hurt, other than, you know, other than like, well, it sucks, you know, I feel bad for him and everything, is it's Amari on Hampton or George Petaway time. You know, you got that, your stud freshmen are right there. That's the first thing I thought about. Now, you know, maybe – that's that would be a better thing come week six, week seven, maybe not the, at the beginning of the game starting, the beginning of the season starting, Andre Green and, and the two fresh running backs. But that's what I thought about. It's like if there was to be an injury suffered, if you're a UNC fan, I don't know. I think those are the spots you have your best freshman ready to go. I think losing like a Corey Gaynor would, would hurt even more or an Austin Richards would hurt even more in the whole scheme of things. But I think – they're, they have some high-end young talent at running back and wide receiver. And, and I think tight end could also um, – I think if, if a tight end got hurt, I think you have two guys that could step in. So that's how I felt. But, look, like I said before, it's never good to lose veteran senior leaders who have been proven – look, I think, I think Antoine Green is a better deep threat right now than Andre Green. I just think that. Um, but I don't know. I think in maybe eight weeks, Andre Green might be the better player. I think, to your point, Ross, it, you can't lose offensive linemen. They need those guys to be healthy. Everybody else is replaceable. I mean, they've recruited enough uh, to have guys that can play. And, and injuries stink for the players themselves. But, yeah, they're, Andre Green's going to play. And he's going to play even if Antoine Green was playing. And he's going to make a difference. Nesbitt's going to make a difference. Those guys need to stay healthy. You start getting down in the depth chart where we're not talking about high-end talent replacing it it is that it is what it is right so offensive line stay healthy on offense john to your point and have either may or chriswell or both be good they don't have to be great they need to be good longo's offense is built for quarterbacks to put up numbers he's done it everywhere he's been um he'll do it this year at carolina the question is which one it'll be not what they'll do in my opinion and to top it off, I was thinking, I was thinking, Tommy, as you were talking about Andre Green and Ross talking about the the high end young talent. You know, Mac uh, was talking about uh, Doc Chapman today, the the freshman wideout, and he compared him to Daz Newsom. You know, he's, he says reminiscent of Daz Newsom in the slot. So there's another uh, true freshman guy that seems like he's got some uh, you know bright days ahead of him there. If you're comparing him to Daz Newsom. We, we know Max the best at hyping up, man. He can hype up players. He can hype up teams. So, you know, and, and look, that's what you're supposed to do in the preseason. Everybody's good right now. Everybody's looking great. <clears throat> but you got to, yeah, got to take the hype with a grain of salt. But, yeah, I mean, that's right. Adam, he did say that. And on the quarterbacks, just if we want to give a final thought, I don't know. We can talk about the quarterbacks all night if you want to. Mac has said repeatedly, you know, that he feels good about both two guys. You know, like, uh, we haven't mm -hmm. named a starter yet. No, we have not named a starter. But – Either one, I'm fine with him. You know, like he said that repeatedly. So if we're taking, you know, if we're we're taking him at his word here, you know, he's he's fine with whoever goes out there between Drake Mayer and Jacoby Criswell. He did clarify today that they, and I mean, not like it's a state secret that they would like to have Connor Harrell redshirt if possible. Um, so you know, I think Con that. I think Connor Harrell's would be really good in <clears throat> three years. All right, um, Johnny T-shirt time. I have been designated as a giant T-shirt guy. I don't know why. This is Tommy's show. <laughs> but Johnny T-shirt and JohnnyT-shirt.com, the one-stop shop for all UNC football needs. Guys, it is guys and girls and, and whoever. Um, we're here 11 days from the opener. It's time to get your shirts, get your jerseys. And it's going to be a little – it's 70 degrees, 75 degrees in Chapel Hill, 69, it, below 70 recently. So get those sweatshirts, get your jackets. It's cooling down as September turns and October – Get your sweatshirts. I'm a big crew neck sweatshirt guy. I have a gray crew neck from Giant T-shirt. I have a blue crew neck from Giant T-shirt. And I have a um, a navy crew neck from Giant T-shirt. I love it. You can get hooded sweatshirts, T-shirts, jerseys, any sports you want. Johnny T-shirt and GiantT-shirt.com. Stop before your tailgate. 
Roll in on a Friday. Go to Johnny T-Shirt. And, of course, check it out online. <clears throat> Johnny T-Shirt. JohnnyT-Shirt.com. Remember, all Inside Carolina subscribers get 10% off their order with the promo code found on the premium message boards, Tar Pit and UNC Basketball. So make sure you use that code. Johnny T-Shirt. JohnnyT-Shirt.com. Support local. Support us. Support Inside Carolina. And support of the alumni-owned local companies, Johnny T-Shirt. Tommy. That's it. Adam, you're going to have to do that one day, so <laughs> polish up. Go see him on Franklin Street, too. Was in there over the weekend or last week when we dropped the kid off. Uh, it's a great place to go shop and great people in there. I saw it on Portraits, too. I don't know if y'all saw Mac Brown Portraits on ESPN or, or whatever it was on. They had Johnny T-Shirt uh, front and center there as well. National guys pay the bills on the beat live. InsideCarolina.com and Johnny T-Shirt. All right, boys, it's 9.32 p.m. in the East. We're going to switch over to some defensive talk. Um, let's get the defensive line out of the way. And, Adam, I'll come to you first. I mean, the defensive line, if they play 75% as well as the hype believes they're going to play, they're going to be really, really good. I, don't, I can't remember a Carolina defensive line since maybe 96, 97, 98 that's gotten this much praise from everybody um, as this group has. That's my era, Tommy Ashley. Hey, that's mid that's that's mid my era. What were you doing in '97, Ross? I guess I was in elementary school. I mean, that was right after the Olympics, right? I was 11 years old, 11, 12 years old. Star you know soccer doing? player. You know what You're I was doing? I was covering. For Inside Carolina. I was covering football games for Inside Carolina. Go ahead, Adam. Tommy, you said let's get the defensive line out of the way. They nobody's going to be able to get that defensive line out of the way. What are you talking about over there? <laughs> These guys are a bunch of monsters. Well, I mean. Well, uh, Go ahead. Go, no, Ross. Is this more hype than the the 2010 defensive line, Tommy? The Marvin Austin, Robert Quinn. Is it 09, 10? Um, I don't. That season didn't happen, did it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that was one of those things that maybe spring game hype was okay. a deal. Maybe nine, 2009 had a lot of what, hype. 2010 that's when, for sure. Nine had all the sacks from Robert Quinn, right? Yep. And Marvin and Austin Robert was like, Quinn was talking about he was going to break the record and all that, okay. and then. Yeah, yeah. I've forgotten 10. It's kind of like 96 at Virginia. I've forgotten that too. Adam, I'm trying to let you uh, pontificate. That's my big word for today. He's looking at his notes. I was flipping through my notes. I was remembering <laughs> Mac talking about three technique today. Uh, we were trying to debate what he, how do you spell three technique, whether you write out the three or you use the numeral. I mean, I mean, it's the strength of the team, is it not? Like, or at least how it looks right here on August the 16th. I mean, um, you know, I think Miles Murphy is going to have a big year. I think I said it last week. Um, I mean, you just have so many guys. Javari Ritzy, Mac was saying today, what well, he can play power end or he can play the three technique. They have Miles Murphy on the interior. He can play. You've got Ravo Hasek, you know, who can play there. Um, I mean, it's just so, so deep and so many guys. And I feel like that's going to be, I feel like the front, uh, the front seven is going to be a, a a place where you can hang your hat if you're UNC defensively. So I think the big thing is, and Adam started with it, you have Miles Murphy who's coming off a second team all ACC season, and then you bring in Javari Ritzy who can either rotate with him or play alongside him. Dude, those guys are both, what, 6'4", 6'5", 280, athletic, quick, and proven. And Ritzy played a lot last year. He didn't play as much as Miles, but both those guys are built kind of similar, both athletic. That's a scary one-two one -two combo. And then, of course, Rava Hasek's proven. Kevin Hester's proven enough where you can take some blocks up and then on the edge you're bringing noah taylor who i think is gonna um lead the team in sacks who's getting all the hype as the man uh on the edge of the jack position and then you're bringing a combination of des evans and um came in rucker at the end i mean those names i mean i think we've already talked about this those names sound great they can put it together they got the bodies and look we're not even mentioning uh a travis shaw a, a kedrick bingley jones who they want to roll in um you know, the freshman Keyshawn silver, Keyshawn silver, I think you could see some time at nose or even some three technique. So the bodies are they, they've stayed healthy, knock on wood. And I think, um, you know, adding a guy like Noah Taylor is a great ad to kind of replace Taman Fox. Um, and then everybody gets a year older uh, and uh, hopefully Rainbow Hayes is healthy. I, I believe he is back and practicing for at least a week now. And look, he, he's been a solid player for, he's been a great transfer, Juco transfer pickup for UNC. We don't talk about him a lot. Because he, he missed out on, on ACC Media Day and he was injured at the start of camp, the practices that we did see. 
So we forget about him. I mean, he look, he's he's a guy get in the backfield and, and he's a good leader there too. Ritzy or Murphy, who leads the team in sacks or who has the most sacks between them? Because Murphy came at us after the spring game. I still <laughs> remember him giving us a hard time about not picking him last year. Where, where I've, got, are we? I've got Noah Taylor like Ross. I, I'm on the, the Noah Taylor bandwagon in terms of That's leading all- the team. But if you're talking about the, the defensive line, I've I've got Miles Murphy. I don't want to I never want to disagree with anything Miles Murphy says. Like, you know, well, he, was asking, he was asking us Sunday, you feel me? And I was like, I'm not going to say I don't feel you ever, Miles Murphy. Like, that's, a, that's like a Dudley guy, too. Greens were Dudley guy. Look, if Ritzy plays on the outside, I could see Ritzy kind of just having more opportunities to get to the quarterback because you're playing on the outside. But Murphy's going to be that three technique who's going to get the most reps there, too. So uh, I'll go – if Adam goes Murphy, I'll go Ritzy. I, I think Ritzy's a freak. So we think Noah Taylor's going to be – the team leader, Adam? Really? That's – I believe it was Taylor Vipolis that put me on the spot last week. I was over here. I'm so stupid. I was l- looking at the private chat as opposed to the comments. So, I'm on the comments today. I'm loving these comments. Ross, you are – they – you know, the people love you over here. You're a man of people, the people. People love um, me or hate me. That's why I, I, I elicit emotion from people. They either love me. You see on Twitter, man, people hate me on Twitter or I guess love me on Twitter. It's It's, it's like that in real life sometimes too, baby. You know, know. like – uh, it's a visceral reaction. Never yeah, ignore. Between, Never between ignore. The hair and your language tonight. I mean, we got <laughs> Ross Bingo going on over here. Well, I, yeah, uh, I don't want to be boring or average. I want to either but, be – like, what is it, Rashad McCants? <laughs> dying uh, to be loved or what was born it? Born to be hated, dying to be loved. Hated. I was there for that. Yeah. Uh, Man, you I have hit Taylor all Brooklyn. the – look, Adam, you have hit all the negative – can't say words in front of Inside Carolina people – on this podcast, you mentioned Duke last week. You mentioned Coach K. Now y'all are talking about Rashad McCants. I mean, are we trying to get the trifecta in before the first I didn't the bring paint him dries? Up. I said Rashad McCants. You, you, you anticipate. Go ahead. Our Noah guy Taylor, Taylor Vipolis, I believe, last week. I keep saying Taylor Vipolis. I got his name in my mouth. Uh, I think he asked over under on Des Evans sack total, uh, and I or, or a number. I gave him six point five. I don't know. That seemed fair to me for a guy that didn't have any sacks last year. And I said <laughs> that I think Noah Taylor will lead the team in sacks. I mean, could I be wrong? Of course I could be wrong. I don't know. But uh, it seems the way that that this defense is is schemed up and designed up. The guy's a, you know, a senior. Uh, he's played all over the place at Virginia. He had a seven sack year at Virginia. I just think that I just think that he could he could be sort of a pass rushing star while you got Cedric Gray and Power Eccles in the sort of the the you know the middle the interior there at line inside linebacker knocking people's heads off but um yeah I mean I think I think Noah Taylor leads the team in sacks it's, but it's because of his position Tommy they're gonna right. I mean he, yeah. he's a jack if the jack is get after the quarterback they're gonna scheme things up for the fast guy on the edge to get to the quarterback Chris Collins and Noah Taylor are the jacks you know <laughs> uh, and one of us wrote a story that that Noah Taylor had been a jack of all trades at UVA mm-hmm. and now he's just a jack for Gene Chizik. I don't know if you want to read there's, that. There's there's a joke here, and I'm not going to say it. They're going to go off. The Jackson go off. Put it together. Oh my God. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in our our next YouTube question here. It's actually a really interesting one. We addressed it a little bit already, but why haven't we heard as much about Raymond Bohasic? I think part of that is he has been injured a little bit, but it's interesting too because. He played 550 snaps last season. He was graded out on Pro Football Focus at 73.3, which is a pretty good grade. And it's interesting because we haven't heard much about him. I think, honestly, the less he plays this season for North Carolina, the better. That doesn't mean not playing at all. But the more that the younger guys are playing, it shows that some of the younger guys like a Kendrick Bigley Jones are coming along. And maybe they don't need Raymond Vohasek to eat as many snaps. Uh, think about Max first years. Uh, Aaron Crawford was on the field basically the entire game. Same with Jason Strobridge. He was on the field the entire game because they just didn't have any of that depth. So that number, Raymond Vohasek's snap count, that's what I'm kind of keeping an eye on to determine how well the young defensive linemen are coming along. Ray Vohasek endeared himself at, you know, against NC State, I think, a couple of years ago. And then you know he got the penalty last year. I when you say Carolina will be better if he doesn't play much, I, I think if these guys, all of these guys play 20 to 30 snaps a game, I think that's mm-hmm. when Carolina's the best. But, Ross, to your point earlier, 
Vahasic is a, is a veteran guy that's been there, done it, and he's done it for Carolina. I mean, I think he – does he start? Does it matter? I don't know if it matters. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, is, is he that good, or is he good enough to start for this group? Vahasic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he starts if he's healthy. I think Kevin Hester got a lot of time early just because Vahasic was injured. From all we hear here, Vahasic is back, and we haven't been in practice to see that. But yeah, I mean, Vahasic started last year. I think he's going to start, but I think John's right. If they can switch out Vahasic and Hester and 50 50, even, I think that's great. I think that that position that you get so tired on the lines, just battling big dudes back and forth. I think that's a, that's a great point. Even if you roll in, you know, Travis Shaw a little bit in the third quarter, maybe, or, or, um, or, or Keyshawn Silver. I'm not sure if, if Shaw and Silver, I know they can play tackle. I'm not sure if they can play or no tackle. I'm not sure if they can also play three technique. I don't think they're at that point yet. It must be just big, big noses. What about Ross Robert? A big Ray Vohasic guy. He's a Me? believer in Ray Vohasic. He's he's like Ray Vohasic for several years. Several years into Josh's question that you pulled up, John, I, I do look at Ray as as a cornerstone piece of the defense um, from a leadership standpoint. When we've talked to him, we talked to him, I believe, in the spring, and he talked about uh, one of the reasons he decided to come back because he didn't he didn't have to come back um, was that he wasn't fully healthy last year. At some point, he he was playing hurt or played through an injury. He wasn't fully healthy, and he wanted to perform better to to give himself the best chance to to play you know professionally. Um, so that was that was his sort of mindset coming into this year. And it's unfortunate, yeah, you know, he wasn't able to go to the ACC kickoff in Charlotte, which is a, a great time to talk to guys and you know brush up with them and everything. And I don't believe we've talked to him this preseason. Um, I, re- I requested him for tomorrow, so we'll see if we get him. There we sometimes, go. sometimes we you can it. request you. Sometimes you can request players to kind of see who's healthy and who's injured or not. A little trick mm-hmm. there. Giving away, giving away the state secrets on the live mm-hmm. podcast. Keep, Look, yeah. uh, some uh, Derek Owens asks thoughts on recent insights about how the staff would wait and call additional plays that caused tremendous confusion and all that on defense. Look, uh, Ross did a show with a uh, Jeff Shotmer, and I threw up some quotes for it this week. But go back and listen to that podcast and listen to Shotmer talk about the difference in Bateman and Chiswick and the way they call defenses. I, I think you will see a lot less confusion out of the guys this year. Um, Deems May came over to the tent at a spring game, and, and I said, what What did you like the most? And he said how calm the defense looked. And that was in the spring game. That was months ago. There wasn't a bunch of frantic stuff going on. So I think, think that will certainly help. I think that will certainly help the young guys make a difference and so let's talk about one of the young guys that didn't get much run last year and everybody asked about him ross rah rah dilworth uh you know clearly they're going to get him on the field they've talked about that they're not tipping their hand too much but (laughs) rah rah is too good not to play um you know i got a feeling and charles you were asked over under on how many uh basically targeting penalties does acc call against power echoes i think rah rah (laughs) Um, is a pretty important guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this well, defense. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's too much time to spend on this. I mean, I, it's clear he's going to be in some special packages because we've asked Cedric Gray that, and he was, I mean, I kind of alluded to as like, hey, man, are you going to bring in Ra Ra on special packages? And he was like, I can't really tell you that, you know. And then we asked Ra Ra the same thing, and he was like, yeah, we have something planned, but I can't really tell you that. So who knows? He'll make. Maybe comes in as a decoy on some blitz packages. I don't know how much UNC is going to have blitz pass blitz packages under Chiswick's um, defense, but I'm excited to see how they use Ra Ra. Maybe kind of as a star on some things where you kind of fake him into some coverage and then bring him off the corner as a blitz. I mean, he is fast, he's athletic. He's not big. I mean, I I saw him in the interview. I don't know if you know this, Adam. We interviewed him on Sunday night. He's slight. Um, he is not a big dude. I know a lot of schools recruited him as safety. So he's a, he's a special guy who can be used in different ways and use that speed to his advantage. Um, and power, man, I'm pumped to see power play too. Everyone talks about how vicious he is. Um, he ready? He got kicked out already for a targeting, right, Tommy? Yeah, it was one of the biggest hits of the season. And I'm yeah. Not the the on the kickoff, yeah. And his whole thing is old school football. So, yeah, I think, I mean, he's made to play middle linebacker. Adam, anything to yeah. add on Ra Ra? I know you got a Ra Ra story cooking. Credit where credit is due, Ross. Uh, the uh, on the subject of Ra Ra, I thought you asked a fantastic question to Cedric Gray a couple of days ago, 
And um, Cedric recognized it because he was smiling and he was nodding, you know, smiling and nodding at you because that's what you said. Uh, like what, you know, are there special situations where we could see Rara's abilities um, come out? Rara did say to us on Sunday that he, I believe he had gained eight pounds coming into camp, but then with camp being camp, he'd, he promptly just lost those eight pounds. I believe that's what he said to us. Um, yeah. So another interesting thing I thought um, that, that Ra Ra talked to us about the other night was that, you know, he was trying to slow everything down. So of course, you know, the nerd that I am, I'm thinking, well, you're slowing it down to try to even go faster. You know, like that's, he was trying to slow down, you know, the thinking aspects of what he was doing, even foot placement, just so he could play faster. So I think we'll definitely see a better version of him this year. I mean, he's a year older. Um, you know, he's got a year more experience. And it will be cool to see what they can do with him. You know, Mac has talked about, um, you know, Gene Chizik has talked about, you have Power Eccles and you have Cedric Gray and the, the, the inside linebackers there. Behind them, they have Ra Ra Dilworth and Sebastian Cheeks, the true freshman. You know, they need to see what, what those, what Rara and, and Cheeks can give them, how much they can give them, where they can excel or where they can contribute, and maybe where situations they don't want to have them in um, for. But I, this is a terrible transition. I noticed a, a question in the chat a little bit ago from John Sink about Jaquirius Conley. John, just to answer that real quick for you, I don't want to leave you hanging. Uh, <laughs> we, we we know that we know we know that we know this. We know that uh, JQ Conley. Antoine Green and now Bridge Brooks will not be ready for the season opener. Like I think Mac um, had t told us, you know, who wasn't who, the, the guys who weren't ready yet. And those guys um, won't play. I'm not sure what his timetable is in terms of when he gets back. Obviously, he got hurt against Wofford at the end of November last year, and uh, what an ACL injury nowadays is about an eight to ten month recovery. I think, but we know we won't see him in the season opener, I don't believe, unless something, you know, unless something has changed to where he's healing up quicker than expected. I One thing about the week, maybe Notre Dame would be the earliest they'd see Conley. Who knows? Modern One medicine. Thing one thing to add on linebackers, you know, with Cedric Gray and Power Eccles, you know, that could be your linebacker combination for the next two to three years if Gray wants to take an extra year. Or Gray could, I mean, if he has a great year, I could see him leaving too. But there's some young linebackers um, right there. You got Power Eccles as a sophomore. Cedric Gray is a junior, but has that extra COVID year because he was a freshman in 21. And then they, they really like Sebastian Cheeks. Um, it'd be interesting to see how Ra Ra's career goes, um, if he can be an every down linebacker in this in this defense. What you got, John? I see some more questions, but I'll let you ask them. Let's see. I've been looking at a few different good questions here. I like this one. This is a really good one here from, from Mark. We talked about the D line a second ago. Is Noah Taylor the football version of Brady Manic? I think there's a couple things that go into that. Brady Manic obviously was a fan favorite for what he did on the court, but also off the court too. So what do you think? Could Noah Taylor ascend to that fan favorite level? I think UNC's not gonna have anybody like Brady Manic for fifteen years. I mean that gets phenomenal what he did. I it's hard in football, it's just different in football, but I, I like the analogy. He could have a you know, a similar kind of uh, impact in terms of just what he does in year, in year one for the defense. But Brady Manick, you know, put the team on his back at times to lead them to a Final Four at times. And was was uh, because of everything he does and the way he played was a fan favorite. Adam, you're a big basketball guy. Brady Manick, folk hero, uh, in my opinion. How many points would Brady Manick have scored against Baylor if he hadn't gotten tossed with, like, what, nine minutes left, ten minutes left? He had the 26. That, I mean – Brady Manick's a folk hero, in my opinion. Uh, I think Brady Manick is beloved by the UNC fan base for good reason. Um, and I can also tell you, I'm not trying to get into too much basketball. I do love basketball. Um, I had the pleasure of sitting near uh, Brady Manick's family uh, several times during the NCAA tournament, like right in front of them. My press seat was right in front of them behind me. Great people. Uh, enthusiastic. Spirited. Um, you know, R-rated at times, but uh, great, great people fired up. I don't know. Yeah, I like the analogy too, Mark. I don't – I think that's a very high bar to set. Uh, 
because I, I think that when when basketball season comes around, we're going to be doing too much of the Pete Nance Brady Manic comparison, which we don't need to do. I think I think we don't need to go there on that because I think Pete Nance is going to be a, a brilliant player too. But um, how, about, how about this? Noah Taylor can be the first Noah Taylor for you. <laughs> Does that make everybody happy? Who wants a, a nice, polite show? Yeah, I mean it's a uh, Brady Manic's unicorn. Next question. Uh, look. Uh, you know, if Noah Taylor is as good as people seem to think he might be, um, Carolina could be pretty good uh, on the defensive side. Let me ask a question. One more question uh, from the chat. Is Downs a game changer on special teams a la Switzer and Geo? We talked about this before. It scares people to death to see uh, their favorite players or the best players back there returning kicks. Um, but punt returns, Downs could be electric, Ross. I mean, he could be the guy. Shout out my guy, Jeff Finn. That's an old, old buddy from Greensboro, UNC alum, big-time dentist in Greensboro. Shout out Jeff Finn, huge UNC football fan. Um, and Downs didn't do much as a punt returner last year, right? Did he do anything of significance? I don't remember anything. Has the rules – hard to do it now. Like, have the Tommy's, rules cha- – what's yeah, changed, Tommy's Adam? up some OGs for good reason, like with Ryan Switzer. Like, I mean, an OG. But, like, I just, th- I just think – now watch, watch Downs return a kick in the opener. Uh, well, what has changed on punts that has not led to many? Is there something different? I know kickoffs has changed. No, I was speaking more about kickoffs. I mean, punt is hard. I mean, punt return. I mean, if you get eight to ten yards out of a punt return, that's a good punt return. And punters yeah. are better, and guys are faster. And how many? Look, let's let me ask this question: How many punts did Geo return other than the state game? I don't remember many, if any. Yeah, I mean that's just that you know Gio G- had had the biggest one, but I mean Switzer was special and he, he had a mentality, you know that one that he, he was about to set the record or he was about to have two in one game and he he got called back the touchdown. I remember that one. I mean Switzer was special. He had a knack for it. I I would love to see Downs on kickoff because kickoff you can get some space. You make one cut and go, and Downs is the fastest player on the team. So I would love to see him on kickoff. Look, he could get injured, so I, I get the fan mentality of not having them there but um you know i put put uh pet away back there put your best athletes with the ball you need the ball in the hands of your best players um i think downs though can can have a better season at, at wide receiver than switzer even though switzer was was a machine too those two years last two years josh downs had 101 catches last year i mean i feel like now i'm not a football coach for good reason but i feel like i mean you know let, let, let's Let's let him rest on some of those kick returns. But Max said that he was the number one guy at punt returner. Um, and then they had, you know, the freshman behind him. But they they hadn't sorted out the kickoff return guys yet. But, yeah, I mean, I'm with Ross. Get some burners back there. Petaway, <laughs> Doc Chapman, Dante Balfour, those guys. And, you know, Josh, save it for first, second, and third down coming up here. There you go. Um, I, I feel like a lot – I feel like there's going to be a lot asked of Josh Downs, and I mean, certainly can deliver. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what he does coming off the season that he had. The guy had 101 catches and 1,300 yards. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they play him too, because they've talked about moving him all over the place. You know, inside, outside. I don't know. Do you do you motion him into the backfield sometimes? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, yeah. Look at the ball. That, I think he did that against Texas A&M, mm-hmm. if my memory served, in the Orange yeah. Bowl. I don't remember it much yep. last year. I think, I think if Downs has over 100 catches this year, um, Carolina's offense is not as good as it could be. That's a good point. Yeah, they're going to try to get the ball to Downs in a lot of different ways just to, to throw defenses off outside, in the backfield, sweeps, jet sweeps, all that good stuff in the slot. Um, but different quarterback, you know, it's it's not – Sam Howell's not there. Before we leave the punt return, uh, Gio returned the punt 16 times his sophomore season. He had two touchdowns, so the NC State one and, and one that uh, might have been Elon lost. Yeah, that sounds right. I think it was early in the season. Um, so yeah, he scored a bunch of different. They had a season opener against Elon, and it was like a noon game or a, it was an early afternoon game, and it was hot. He had a rush crazy. receiving. He had a rushing, a receiving, and a punt return or something. I don't remember them, but, yeah, everybody remembers the state one. State one's probably the biggest punt return ever in Carolina history. They may uh, have used a running clock in the second half of that game. It, it got so bad. I, I could be making that up, but they, I, I think they might have used a running clock that day. Anyway. It, it might have been Old Dominion when it was like 80 to 20. Anyway, fun times. That was when uh, Larry Fedora would beat the heck out of the FCS schools, you know. Hey, you take the over against the FCS schools under Larry Fedora. 
John, you want to wrap us up? You got a question? I have a special segment here. So I've actually queued up something. It's pretty cool. And then I'll ask a, a question for everyone. So I'm going to play this footage. This is footage from UNC uh, in NCAA Football 14. Every year they release a roster update. And they kind of update it with, with who's on the team. So you can see Chris oh, nice. there. And there's Amari yeah, and Hampton. Tight. I Dang, have a question, Hampton. though. Who's that? Who's that? That's uh, Young Mac. Yeah, it's all, all the <laughs> yeah. players. Looks like Antoine Green there. Here's the question, though, queued up for you guys. Who are the top five players, according to this updated roster, for UNC football, according to season? I'll, I have the list here. I can give us the overall ratings. But who do you think is ranked top overall for the UNC football roster? Josh Downs. That's right. Josh Downs is a 91 overall this year in the NSA football game, the roster updates that they share out. Okay, who's number two, if you had to guess? Who's the second best player on the team, according yes. to them? Who do you think? Is this, wait, is this just offense? Just offense or defense? Everybody. Whole team. Everybody. Uh, Cedric Gray. No, Cedric Gray, he's pretty down there. He's like nine or ten, actually. How about I'll give Tony you a hint. Grimes? Tony Grimes is three. He's an 86 Ooh. overall. I'll give you a hint. This guy's on the defensive line. Miles, Miles Murphy. Murphy. Yes. Miles Murphy, 89 overall. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get this one. Number four. Who's is fourth it, on the list? Could it be one of the freshman running backs? Is, is that how I have no idea? Is that did they do that? No. They are ranked, but it's not them. It's a player from the secondary and not who you'd expect. Cam Kelly. That's right. Cam Kelly is in 86, 86 overall at free safety. Adam coming he in. He could have a lot of interest. Ross and I were talking about this. Cam Kelly could have. You know, he had games last year where he had multiple interceptions. He had a great game against Duke, which I know, I mean, it's not, you know, it's Duke. But um, well, Cam Kelly could have a, a big year in terms of interceptions. I mean, we if you have – Sorry. Um, by Cam the way, Kelly's so, biggest mistake – Go ahead. – was in the biggest rivalry game. If that doesn't happen, Cam Kelly is getting much love. But mm -hmm. uh, those, those 60 seconds in Raleigh will forever haunt that young man. Go ahead, Storm Adam. Storm Duck is back, by the way. I think someone asked this in the chat. Storm Duck is back practicing. Uh, we Mac told us today. Um, so, I mean, go ahead, Ross. Yeah, I'm trying to get to get your point. Yeah, if they have Storm Duck locked down, Legend Cavazos lock them down, and Tony Grimes have a great, great season, where I think Tony Grimes is ready for that big season, then, yeah, they could have a secondary that cuts off a lot of options and quarterbacks throwing it deep on third down it gives the safeties a chance to intercept the ball i think that's the point we talked about this earlier adam and i did but um you just think this is the year for for both duck and grimes to to kind of pop off um if it was to be a year this would be the year so how do we do john did we get four of the five pretty good four of the five the last one is ravo hasek at defensive line he's a wow. okay. 96 Great. overall so pretty good actually you guys guys knocked it out if you're curious as well what the quarterbacks are uh, let's see here. Jacoby Criswell is an 81 overall, and Drake May is an 80 overall. So we'll see yeah. what happens throughout the season. All right. I'll producer John on that. I think that was uh, that was a great segment. We didn't know it was coming, and I thought it was pretty good. Good job, right. Johnny. Do, do you play it, John? Oh, yeah. I, I have the updated roster. A little. Do you have uh, revamp? Do you have. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's get it on. We'll it's get coming it on. too for the YouTube Shorts channel. Just a little preview. We're going to post out. Uh, simulating the season on YouTube shorts. So if you're watching on YouTube, keep an eye out for that shorts video. So I played the revamp last year in the Orange Bowl and uh, had Javante and Michael Carter in the game as if they would have played. And, of course, Carolina beat Texas M. But Michael Carter was the fullback. <laughs> and I tweeted at him. He said, I'm about to rip some heads off. Anyway, video games for the, for the young crowd or not so young crowd. All right. Well, Ross, you got anything else? Hard knocks time, baby. On the beat, right to Hard Knocks. Let's go. All right, let's close it out. This has been On the Beat Podcast, Inside Carolina Podcast, sponsored by Johnny T-Shirt, johnnytshirt.com. Adam Smith, Ross Martin, producer John, with all the great work. Check us out on Thursday night. we got a prediction pod. We'll be back on that day. Plenty of Inside Carolina content coming. Thanks, boys.